Good evening, everybody. Let me fix my volume. Let me start my clock. We are in another episode of Space Engineers. I think we're up to 14 now. Uh, survival. Let's play um, version 1.190. And today we are going to be attaching the rest of our wheels to our mine construction rover. Um. I think what I said I was gonna do. No, I I did what I said I was gonna do. Um, that was a, another episode I'm thinking of. What I did say I was gonna do for this episode was do some preparation ahead of time so that we actually had the components we needed um, ready to go. And I did do that. So these 56 steel plates are for our wheel struts. So we will come up here and do this. And I'm getting some lag because I tend to leave the game open, which is probably not the best thing for me to do for my performance. But I leave the game open and then when I come back to it after that, it jerks around a little bit. But anyway, so we will attach these. The same process as the other ones. I suppose I probably could have just done this off camera, but... Since I did actually prepare the components ahead of time, it should go a little bit faster than it did previously. If you really don't want to see it, you're welcome to skip the episode, although obviously I appreciate the views. So one, two, three, and the last one. So in previous episodes, we had to drop this down, set up a remote control block, and drive ourselves forward a little bit so that we were clear of the wind turbines. We've done that. So now we've actually got room to do this. And we also have shut everything down now. The, uh, the pistons are turned off, the wheels are turned off so that we can preserve the little power that we have on that battery. We're still going to move the battery. Um, that's not its final form, its permanent location. Uh, but in case we do need power for anything over the course of the construction, we want to preserve that and only have to use the one instead of needing to build another one. Or find some obscure way of charging it since we learned that wind turbines will not work on grids that can move. I was under the impression that if you locked the landing gear it would be able to, to function, but apparently that understanding was not correct. I might play around with that to see exactly how that is supposed to work, because I've seen something similar to that work in the past just didn't work for me. Alright, so there's the struts for the back. Now we'll go up and do the struts for the front. Still got a decent amount of hydrogen. And then we did start these ones just so that we knew location. Trying to keep track of how big this thing was getting as we were building it out. Um, and apparently I miscounted the number of steel plates I was going to need. Go me. Alright. Not a big deal, we have plenty of steel. Or iron, just means it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to guess I got it about half wrong. And do another 56. I will steal 56 of these ones. 
So we don't have to sit and wait. There's that side. This one we dropped. All right, so there's our struts. Now let me remember how many steel plates we need for each of these. Forty each. So that was my stack of 160 that I created. That those were for. Stack of 32 is for the wheels. get refilled on all of our stuff. These go up here. And these are extra. We must have had 12 on us when we started. That's fine. The hydrogen tank to refill that. And we've got enough to actually place the wheels with what we've got on us, so we'll do that. Alright, so this is the left side, 5x5 five five left, there we go. that one and then there is that one all right now we need to do 39 steel plates at a time so we don't overbuild them and I'm going to pull four of these off because we just used four to do that so I don't get confused when there's some left over. And then... These are the things for the wheels. So these are the things for the... Actual braces. steel plates but we'll have some of the other stuff so we'll go ahead and stick that in here while we're out here another 
39 steel plates. And more of this stuff. all we have. Another 39 steel plates. 39 left. Last one. And that goes up here. Quick refill. Go ahead and do our tank too. All right, that'll be the rest of it. Mostly about those motors. There's the suspension. Now we need to do the wheels themselves. These will come eight at a time. Again, don't want to overbuild them. Fit what we can of the steel tubes. instead of seven. Have to do that over here too. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, because it basically gives you that one for free. That's nice. Well, I don't actually want to lose it. A little cheaty, I guess, but I'm going to take it.
by the way, I'm welding these up a little bit before I actually do the grinding, because otherwise I'll just lose it altogether. Uh, it'll just completely disassemble. So if you weld it up a little bit first and then hit the grinder on it. Do that. Oh, because I had the one extra from over. Okay. I know what I'm doing. So I actually made some extra steel plates for the wheels. It's okay, they'll be used. Don't worry. Have no fear. So now we only actually need five of these. Because one's already in there. last seven that we actually need leaving us with four which is the number of extras that I didn't count on our large steel tubes are already in here Next thing we're going to do is come up here and turn all those wheels off to save power. Because if you'll notice on our battery here, we've got a current output of 8 kilowatts. Each of these takes up 2 kilowatts, and these are the ones that we placed initially. Or these ones are uh, 0 and 2, so they're already off. OCD requires it. Apologies. Off. Now our battery output is zero. So everything we've got is staying here. We're on auto, but we're fully depleted and never because we're not actually taking any power up. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so those are the wheels done. And the wheels are turned off. As they should be. I could just put that battery in recharge mode and it would also never turn never drain. It would, you know, turn everything off, but that's fine, it's whatever. So now we will grab the rest of the steel plates that we have because they're going to be used for construction purposes. We will queue up some interior plates. Do we have any interior plates? We have some interior plates. I will not queue up some interior plates. We're going to take some interior plates because we're going to need to build some conveyors for our peculiar little drill mechanism. We might actually need some more steel plates too, so I'm going to queue those up just because we might need them to, to get stuff placed down. 16 will be enough to start us off, and I think we should have enough interior plates to get us started as well. All right, so the idea is that we want this drill head to be more or less centered here, and because of the way that the offsets work and everything, that means that rather than center it in this stretch of however many, eight, eight, yeah, eight blocks here. This back one technically is an extra. It's not, it's analogous to the one in the front there, um, but we can't actually complete it because of the, the way the drill rotates. So we're really thinking about this in terms of seven. So this would be the middle. We actually need to shift back one because of the way the uh, the pistons arrange themselves. So we're going to build here. And we need to clear off our hot bar because we're done with that stuff. And instead we need conveyor tube and piston. Starting off with conveyor tube, we're not actually building a tube first. We actually need this to anchor. So we need to use excuse me, the block. And one, two, three, four. So it goes here. Oop, I forgot something. In addition to the uh, conveyor tube and the piston, we also need an advanced rotor. Now I don't remember off the top of my head exactly where this 
goes. So let me think for a second here. So we've got the block, got a rotor and a curve. And the center is here, we're starting here. So yeah, we can attach it directly. And we want to line it up so that oops, so that zero is on top. And then we will go back to the conveyor. First one's going to be a curved conveyor pointing up. And then we want a straight conveyor tube and we need to go up. Oop, should have welded up the rotor. Alright, we'll do that. We need nine more steel plates, which we've got more than that in here, so we'll separate those out. I'm not going to drop them just yet. We need ten construction components, four large steel tubes, four motors, two computers. And we need to refill our hydrogen anyway. Construction components, two computers, four large steel tubes, four motors, and then we'll need 30 all together. No, 29 all together, because there's one there. We'll need 29 steel plates to do the rotor head. So we need three more. Oh, I forgot to do the hydrogen tank. That would become a problem. 21% is not going to last us very long. Alright, now there is steel tubes that can go into the uh, rotor head. We don't actually want to place those, so we'll drop those real quick. And then we'll do that first since we have so many steel plates in our inventory, and that should be right. Yep, there we go. Yeah, if you put any weight on the rotor head, if it's not completed, or if it's, uh, yeah, if it's not completed, it will just start spinning and drop the weight to the bottom. And we do not particularly want that. So our output now is 2 kilowatts, because that's what the rotor takes. So we're going to set this rotor, put the lower limit at 0, and then make the velocity negative. And that'll go back into place. Turn this up. Do the same amount of force that we're using to make it move, you want to use to make it stop. And then once this is in position, and a little bit. We will activate the lock. All right, so now that's not going to move anymore. And we have one conveyor tube, two conveyor tubes, so that's one piston's length. Then we're going to need a gap, and that is two piston lengths. So now we need to curb again. It doesn't really matter which direction we go here, but I'm going to go this way. Is this right? Actually, it does matter. I'm sorry, it does matter. Because this would not be centered. Because that's where we need to start for it to be centered, and going this way is not centered. So we do need to turn a specific direction. We need to turn. 
this way. And then go down. So now we're in the corner. Place our first piston. And we don't have any steel plates left because I used them all for the rotor. going. Go ahead and refill while we're waiting on that. Refill all of the things. Alright, now we'll place our piston. That's our first piston. Now it doesn't especially matter which direction we go because we're basically going to go in a circle and then come back or go in kind of a go in rows we're going to go in rows I went in a circle on the first one but it occurred to me that if I don't go in a circle if I go in rows instead that I can save myself a layer of conveyors because I can just go straight down to the next uh, the next layer of pistons so this is better to go in rows so now we go back up two blocks for the piston length and then we do not want to go that way yet we want to go this way first and then we need our next piston now we're going to go this way to cover the length of the piston and since we're going in rows we want to go this way and down and piston and this way And up two for the length of the piston and this way and down the piston and now this way and up Conveyor blocks for the length of the piston. And this way. Back down. Piston. Now, this time, instead of turning, because there's nowhere else to turn to keep ourselves in a square, instead of turning, we are going to go down to the next layer. And because we set it up this way, instead of bringing it into the middle, we can just start our circle here and then come and we'll do a circle this time because we want to end in the middle um, but we can just start here we don't have to do any sort of you know moving around shenanigans like I did on the uh, the one in my creative mode we just go straight into a piston and then we want to go this way Okay, we do need to go too, because I forgot about the ones on the bottom. All right, um, but we need two layers of conveyors still, so this is still saving us at least one conveyor. Uh, but we need to grind this stuff off. We just need one extra down there. And then the piston attaches to that. Now we turn. Nope. We'll switch to a piston, that's not right. Now we've got room. And we need to go... This way. Now 
going this way. Which is where we're going in a circle. So we go this way. Down. This way. go. Now the next thing we need is another advanced rotor. Now the rotation of this one doesn't matter, but it does need to be oriented properly. And then on the bottom of that, we attach a conveyor junction. bunch more conveyor junctions. And then we need to grab drills. Spin a little bit, that's okay. And we need one more on the bottom, but I actually need to leave this exposed so that I can weld it. So there'll be one more drill that goes on the bottom here for the, the center piece and hopefully I left enough room to actually be able to weld everything in this contraption. But we are running out of time and watching me weld stuff is not exactly exciting. Clearly this takes quite a bit of components to, to completely weld up. So I'm going to do that on camera. Thanks very much for watching, or off camera rather. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see the finished product and what we do next time. Uh, next time what we're going to be working on is we will do the conveyor that moves us back from the drill assembly to our cargo containers which will be up in this general vicinity um and once the cargo containers are done honestly we can start using this thing um what i'll probably do is at least one cargo container and at least one hydrogen uh, or O2 H2 generator and at least one hydrogen engine because um, then we'll have everything that we need to actually get it powered and keep it powered and um, then we'll harvest some ice with it or yeah we'll harvest some ice with it on the, the little bit of power that we have in the battery here and start getting it filled up with, uh, with hydrogen and power and then we can build the rest of it on the fly, kind of. Um, I mean, we'll have to put a, at least a refinery on it before we go. But then we can just drive this off somewhere over, a, you know, just a empty area, empty space. Probably head over towards the, the silver anyway. Um, and start drilling up stone and ice. And then we'll be able to fill it with, uh, with um, words. <laughs> we'll be able to get the... The power that we need from hydrogen by refining the ice, we'll be able to get the materials we need for components by refining stone, 
and uh, that'll be all we need to do. We might need to run back to the base and use the proper assembler. Uh, no, not the 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 proper refinery. No, we don't even need to do that. We can do it all with the basic assembler. I was thinking about survival kit stuff, but yeah, once we get an assembler attached also, um, or basic assembler attached also, I should say, we will be uh, able to complete it using parts that we can make on site. Um, we'll just need to make sure that we grab some cobalt so that we can build the, the metal grids and stuff because we can't get that out of stone, obviously. But yeah, so uh, subscribe if you're uh, eager to see that. Um, at the very least, we will get the conveyor done and uh, at least one of the cargo containers. Probably work on you know, some of that other stuff as well. Um, we need hydrogen tanks as well. But yeah, we'll be working on all that. So please tune in next time. Uh, please like and comment if you are so inclined. And we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.